Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up, Explore Your Passion, where you'll meet the people who are living their dreams and learn the secrets to their success. I'm your host, Ryan Ray, and we are broadcasting live worldwide and taking your questions in chat right now at wakeuptv.com. We've got a great show lined up for you tonight. Here's a look at what's coming up. Beginning under nearly impossible conditions in communist Cuba, Porto's Bakery has grown to become one of the most well-known Cuban bakeries on the West Coast. Overcoming everything from lack of ingredients to police raids, Betty Porto shares the challenges they faced and the secrets to their family recipe for success. Plus, even after almost a decade of working as a secretary, dancer Caterina Tomas never lost touch with her passion. Watch as she tells how she finally broke free and shares her tips to help you do the same. And later, flamenco guitar guitarist Esteban de Los Angeles performs as Caterina shares her passion for dance live. Today on Wake Up, Explore Your Passion. Wake Up! Welcome back. Our first guest, Betty Porto, co-owner of, of Porto's Bakery, is here with us live tonight. Betty, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you here, Betty. Betty, I want to let you know, if, if it's not a secret, I'm going to let it out of the bag. Porto's is one of my favorite, favorite bakeries. I think it's, it is my favorite bakery. Oh, thank you. You guys do such an amazing job with all of your pastries and your cakes. If you could describe your bakery to someone who's never been there in one or two sentences, what would you say? Boy, that's hard to do. It's hard you, to sum you've up, been there, it? right? Yeah, it's, it's such an it's, amazing operation. It's um, chaos with 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 an organization and a purpose. And uh, when people come in, they look it looks chaotic. But by the time they leave, they say it's you know works like a well-oiled machine. Now, I think one of the things that you do maybe dif differently than many bakeries is I think there's just so much love in everything that you bake. I don't know if, if you would agree with that. You've told me that the recipes that come out of Porto's taste exactly the same as when your mother makes them at home. Exactly. They're, you know, the, all the recipes, the, the things that make us unique are her recipes. Uh -huh. And she made sure that, you know, when they were made into a larger scale that they tasted the same because she's a very passionate woman and there's only one way for her to do things and the right way so when you come into the bakery everything that you taste tastes like homemade it tastes like your mother made it out of her own kitchen and, and it doesn't taste like a bakery that you know yeah it's the large scale bakery that we are now take us take us back because you are the daughter of Rosa Porto right she's the founder of, of Porto's bakery yes. correct take us back to the beginning how did it all start and when when and where well we came from Cuba in 1971 so she worked out of the house for like you know, a few years and when she ran out of beds because she used to put all the cakes on top of the beds you know, in order to cool them off then we decided it was time to move on to a, to a small shopping center in Silver Lake and Sunset. Now Betty, but, and, and before we, we move to the United States, I want you to tell me a little bit about what was it like in Cuba at that time and, and why really she decided to start baking cakes from home. Well, in, at home, in Cuba, you, everybody has to do something to, to survive. And mm -hmm. so when we decided to leave Cuba, you know, you, you become the enemy of the state. So she was fired from her job. So was my dad. He went to a labor camp making eight dollars a month so we couldn't survive both of them were fired from their jobs exactly at the same time and how were you intended to continue to survive i mean well, what, what did they expect that's not their problem right yeah you're not welcome anymore you're the yeah. enemy of the state so she knew how to make cases she started making them at home in order to support us basically it was her way of surviving because my father was only making eight dollars a month and he was in a, a month. in a labor camp so we didn't see him for a long time. Wow. And um, she just, you know, she was one of those women that she didn't stop to think too long about, you know, or to lament or to, you know, to look back and say, you know, we had it so good. She just went in and, and started doing what she had to do to survive. Why cakes, Betty? Why not something else? Why didn't she go sell, I don't know, oranges on the street? Because, you know, I think she comes from a family of women that were always into cooking and making wine. So she grew up with the smells and her mother's kitchen of cakes being made and wine being made. And so she, you know, she was a home economic teacher. And even though she didn't practice that, she ran an office. 
she, you know, she was very talented. She's very gifted, artistically gifted. Tell us, Betty, about some of the some of the challenges you faced uh, there in Cuba. I think that you had said that um, your home was ra raided by police. Well, right. You know, in Cuba, it, it, what she was doing was what you call private enterprise, mm -hmm. and that was illegal. So we, of course, had a great neighbors, and we knew when the secret police, you know, the, were coming, and so we would throw all the machines through the neighbor's house, wow. who was a police officer, but he was a friend more than a police officer. So we were lucky because if we would have been caught, she would have been in jail for at least 20 years back in the days. It was a big crime to be doing, you know, private enterprises is, is not something that that a communist regime will allow. So, well, I have to I have to say, Betty, for her to have started this business in in, a, in a, an economy when it was illegal right. and everyone was poor, wow, that was an amazing feat for her. Not only that, you got to understand that when she made a kick and she charged you, you had to bring your own eggs because everything was rationed. So you had to, you know, you uh, as a customer brought your eggs and your flour and your sugar that you put together through months of, of saving and buying things in the black market. Well, Betty, we're going to hear more about that in just a moment. We're going to talk a little bit about Porto's start in the United States, and we'll take a virtual tour of Betty's pride and joy. And as we go to break, a quick preview of some behind-the-scenes footage from Porto's Bakery. We'll be right back.